Hello guys, so in this video, I am going to discuss to you the design of T-beams and other non-rectangular beams based on NSCP 2015 and ACI 31814. Let me um, clarify lang, no? take note that T-beam is actually non-rectangular beam. No? Pero usually, yung T-beam na topic is a different topic. Kung baga, hiniwalay siya sa rectangular beams na topic. No? And of course, no, kaya, uh, kaya ko sinamap sa video na ito, yung non-rectangular beams, no? it's because same sila guys ng procedures ng pag-design ng T-beams. Okay? So, same lang sila guys ng procedures. Review muna natin yung definition ng T-beams and bakit nga ba merong tinatawag na T-beams? No? So, T-beams is the result of slabs and beams which are placed monolithically. So, ano yung ibig sabihin guys pag sinabi natin monolithic? Ito yung pag binuhusan natin yung slab at saka yung beam at the same time. So, ibig sabihin, isang buhusan lamang, monolithic. No? So, ang nangyayari dito is nag act as isang system yung ating beam at saka yung ating slab. So, ang nangyayari nito is nagiging connected yung both parts ng ating system. No? Yun nga yung ating beam at saka yung slab. And, bali, yung beam ay nagkakaroon siya ng extra widths sa may taas which are called the flanges. So, etong part na to, so ito yung guys, yung ating T-beam, no? So, ito is tinatawag nating flange ng ating T-beam. And yung length niya is tinatawag nating effective flange width. Or yung ating symbol for that is B sub F. Okay? And then, the part of the T-beam below the slab is referred to as the web or stem. So, ito sa part na to guys is called the web or stem. Okay? And then take note that the beam may be called L-shaped if the stem is at the end of the slab. So again guys, no, kapag yung stem, ito, ay nasa dulo ng ating slab, then it is called an L-shaped, pero T-beam pa din yun. So ito is called an L-shaped na T-beam. So take note that T-beam is not exclusive to T-shaped beams. So hindi porke... Uh, hindi siya T, korteng T, ay hindi na siya tatawaging T-beam. So, ayun. So, take note, guys. Na, for example, okay, so this one is T-beam, obviously, because it is T-shaped, okay? Pero this one, this is also a T-beam, no? Kahit hindi siya mukhang T, no? Kasi, take note, guys, na kapag combination nga ng ating slab at saka ng beam, no? T-beam na yung tawag natin dun. E, di ba nga sa dulo nga ng ating slab, Kapag ka nandun yung stem sa may dulo, ang tawag nga natin is the L-shaped beam. So, uh, pero T-beam pa din yun. Okay? So, for example, kahit pag ganito yung ating itsura ng ating beam, then that is still uh, called T-beam. So, take note again, no, that T-beam is a non-rectangular beam, no? Kaya nga, sa topic na to, sa video na ito, ay dalawa yung ating topics. That is, yung pag-design nga ng T-beams and other non-rectangular beams. Sa pag-design nga ng T-beams, guys, and other non-rectangular beams, no? Ay gumagamit tayo ng design method na tinatawag na ultimate strength design or strength design, okay? So, itong method na to ay gumagamit ng equation na M sub U must be less than or equal to phi M N. Take note na itong equation na ito or inequality equation is ginagamit natin sa pag-design and pag-analyze nga ng ating mga um, structural members subjected to moment. No? Kaya nga may M tayo dito. Okay? So, take note na yung MU is to be used when designing. No? Kasi kailangan natin gumamit, guys, ng mga factored loading. No? Kaya yung MU dito is the factored na moment. Okay? So, ginagamit natin siya kung magde-design tayo. Samantalang yung VMN natin is ginagamit natin siya, tinatawag siyang design strength, and ginagamit natin siya when analyzing. So, gusto kasi natin minsan malaman yung moment capacity. For example, na-design na yung beam. Gusto natin malaman yung moment capacity ng ating beam section. So, para malaman yung capacity ng ating beam section, then kailangan natin i-compute nga si VMN. So, ngayon, no, minsan, no, tinatanong, tinatanong tayo kung uh, safe or hindi yung ating structural uh, beam section. So, para malaman natin kung safe siya or hindi, then we need to compare nga yung MU sa VMN. So, i-compare lamang natin guys yung MU sa VMN and kapag naging less than or equal siya sa VMN, kung yung MU natin is less than or equal to VMN, then that is safe. So, that is, uh, ibig sabihin guys, no, itong method na to when comparing MU at saka VMN is analyzing and that is when you want to know if the structure is safe or not. So, ayun. So, ayun. So, kapag hindi na satisfied, guys, kapag, for example, yung MU is greater than sa VMN, then that is not 
safe. Ibig sabihin, the structure is not safe. Hindi siya well-designed. Okay. So, dito tayo guys sa provisions ng INSS CP 2015 pagdating nga sa T-beams. T-beams muna tayo guys, no? Yung non-rectangular beams ay example natin pero hindi natin siya, it, wala kasi masyadong provisions sa non-rectangular beams, no? Sa ating mga codes. Okay. So, dito tayo guys sa provisions sa INSS CP 2015. So, according to to section 406.3.2 that is T-beam geometry for non-pre-stressed T-beam supporting monolithic or composite slabs the effective flange with B sub F shall include the beam web with or B sub W plus an effective overhanging flange with in accordance with table 406.3.2.1 so ito guys yung ating table 406.3.2.1 okay that is dimensional limits for effective overhanging flange width for T-beams so ang sabi dito kung each side of the web list of this yung ating overhanging effective flange width okay kung one side of the web that is list of this three okay so ano yung okay para lang klaro tayo guys no yung mga na dito is h s sub w at saka l sub n so yung h dito is the slab thickness or yun na mismo yung ating h sub f or thickness of the flange okay s sub w here is the clear distance of the adjacent web And L sub N here is the clear length of clear span measured face to face of support. So para lang klaro tayo guys, no, yung H natin ay eto, that is the thickness of our flange or that is the thickness of the slab. Okay? Then, yung ating S sub W is this one, okay, that is the clear distance to the adjacent web. So from this web up to this web, the clear distance of that is S sub W. Okay? And then, of course, we have L sub N here. The L sub N is the length of clear span measured face-to-face -face of the supports. So, for example, ito yung ating T-beam. Ito yung ating beam. Tapos, mayroon tayong poste dito. That is, the, that they are the columns. Then, our L sub N here is mula sa face up to the opposite face. That is L sub N. Okay? Okay, so again, so para lang klaro tayo guys, no, meron tayong each side of the web dito na formula and one side of the web. So para lang klaro, no, yung each side of the web is kapag ka T yung ating shape ng ating beam. So meron kasi tayong dalawang overhanging flange dito. So take note that these formulas are the effective overhanging flange with beyond face of the web. So ibig sabihin guys, eto yun guys, no, eto lang yan. So Itong 8H, S sub W over 2, at saka LN over 8 are formulas to measure the overhanging effective flange width. So, ito lang na side yun. So, if we want to know the B sub F, ito, then we have to add the eff effective overhanging flange with both sides. Dalawa mo kasi yun. Okay. Then, plus, of course, B sub W. Okay? Then, how about this one side of the web? One side of the web. So, bakit siya one side of the web? It's because this formulas is for the effective overhanging flange with B and face of the web kung yung ating T-beam is located sa may dulo ng ating slab, which means ito yung L-shaped beam. So, dito, para malaman natin yung B sub F, that means i-add lamang natin ay isang part ng ating effective overhanging flange with, okay? Then, plus B sub W. So, I hope you understand that, guys. No? And same lang, guys, para sa ating ACI 31814, no? same lamang sila ng formula, actually, no? Uh, same lang lahat. Okay, 8H, S of W over 2, and LN over 8. Okay, and 6H, S of W over 2, and LN over 12. No? Para naman sa one side of the web. Okay, so same lang sila, guys. Okay, then dito tayo, guys, sa... Take note that the neutral axis of T-beams can fall either in the flange or in the web depending on the proportions of the slabs and stems. No? So take note that this is very important. We need to know kung nasaan yung neutral axis ng ating T-beam. So kung magpo-fall ba siya sa flange lang or mag-extend ba siya uh, beyond the flange or mapupunta na siya sa web. Okay, so ibig sabihin guys na ito, no? maaari kasi ganito yung case na yung ating neutral axis is on the flange or maaaring nasa case B which is yung ating neutral axis is on the web. Okay? So, mahalagang malaman nyo siya guys no? kasi iba yung nagkakaroon ng problema sa pag-design kapag ka iba yung case. No? Kapag ka case A, iba yung ating magiging usual na computation flow sa case B. No? Okay? So, anyway, we are going to have a, um, an example problems later on. 
So dito tayo guys sa design nga of TBM. So usually no kapag uh, tinanong ito guys sa problem, ang usual na tinatanong is yung steel area or required na steel area. So yun yung ating kailangan i-compute sa pagde-design ng TBM. Bakit steel area lang? No kasi usually kapag ka TBMs no ay binibigay na kaagad yung dimensions ng ating beam. So, usually, yung hindi lang ibinibigay, kung mayroon man problem na hindi binibigay yung dimension, ito yung kailangan pang i-compute yung effective overhanging, uh, effective flange width, no? yung B sub F. No? Uh, pero, usually, binibigay na talaga yung guys. No? So, yun. So, anyway, so, take note na since kailangan natin nga i-compute nga yung steel area, then, the steel area must satisfy the NSCP 2015 section 409.6.1.2 or the ACI 31814 section 9.6.1.2. Take note guys sa ating provisions. Ito yung ating provisions guys. Uh, ito yung mga minimum na steel area based sa NSCP 2015. Ayun, so that is point the lesser, ay the greater of A and B. So ito yung ating A, 0.25 square to F sub C prime over F sub Y, B sub W, D and 1.4 over F sub Y, B sub W, Okay, so I think na familiar na kayo na ito guys, no? Kasi uh, meron din to sa, sa mga unang videos ko before sa rectangular beams. Okay, so I hope na napanood nyo yun. Okay, then para naman sa ACI 31814, ito naman yung ating mga formula. Take note, magkaiba sila guys, no? Kasi these are empirical formulas and uh, ito is ginagamit lamang sa English na formula and while this one is ginagamit sa SI na formula, no? Nakikita nyo yan siya sa ating mga Uh, codes. Okay, so una natin gagawin guys, no, when we are go when we are designing T beams, is we have to compute for MN, okay? Which is gagamitin natin yung formula na M sub U is equal to phi MN. So equate natin guys lang yung MU at saka yung phi MN, then kukunin natin si MN. So of course, we have to assume here that phi is a tension control. So gagawin din natin dito ng phi is 0.90. Anyway, no, example natin siya later on. Okay, the number two na step is we have to assume Z, okay, that is an initial value na Z, no, by assuming that the compression block is at, at the flange web line. So, ibig sabihin guys, no, uh, uh, i-assume natin na yung ating compression block na 0.85 F sub C prime, I hope na hindi din yung ibig kong sabihin, no. For example guys, no, ito ay uh, non-rectangular beam or T-beam, sabihin natin, this is a T-beam man, okay. So, we will assume that our neutral axis is at the flange web line. So, dito siya, the, dito yung ating assumption. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ito yung ating compression block. So, dito yung apply, ito yung, ito yung ating uh, area of compression concrete. So, kung gagawa tayo, guys, ng ating uh, force diagram, ito yung mangyayari sa ating force diagram. So, of course, yung ating tension force is located at the centroid of the steel. So, ito na nga yun. And we have here a compression force which is located at the centroid of our compression area. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, guys, sa case na to, yung ating A will be equal to H sub F. Okay? So, yeah, yun yung ating assumption, guys. Una, i-assume natin na nandito nga yung ating compression blocks. Hanggang dito yung ating compression blocks sa may flange web line. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, guys, yung ating um, thickness of our uh, slab or thickness of our uh, flange is equals to A. So, kapag kinumpute natin yung Z, take note, yung Z natin dito is the distance between this two forces, the tension and the compression force, and that is simply Z is equals to D minus HF over 2. Or sa case na to, it will be A over 2. No? Okay, so I hope that you understand that. No? Kasi take note, HF at saka A natin will be assumed to be equal. No? So yun yung una nating assumption, guys, no? sa value ng Z. Yeah, okay, so yeah, assume natin that the compression block is at the flange web line. Okay, then third part is we have to calculate a steel, the trial steel area or A sub S using the formula AS equals to MN over FY times Z. Okay, so kapag ka compute natin guys yung uh, uh, trial steel area na yan, then we can now compute for A sub C. Okay, using the equation tension force is equals to compression force. Then, after that, we will calculate Z again. Ayun. And we are going to repeat steps 3, 4, and 5 until yung AS natin ay hindi na mag-change ng value. Ibig sabihin, guys, magiging constant na yung value ng ating AS. So, yun. So, uh, pabalik-balik lang yan, guys. No, repeat lang yung 3, 4, 5, yung AS, AC, at saka Z. 
no hanggang sa maging constant nga si AS. Okay? So para lang maklaro tayo guys, no, ay uh, gumawa ako ng parang flow dito, flow chart. So yun so una is i-compute natin yung PM, yung MN and then we will assume the initial Z Okay, and then compute AS, then AC, then calculate Z. Then after that is babalik dito sa AS, then AC na pod, and then calculate Z na pod. So we are going to repeat this, no, ito, uh, until AS does not change its value. So parang ganito guys, yung fix lamang dito na ating step is yung MN at saka pag-assume ng initial Z. So, ito yung pinakauna dapat, no? And yung susunod is, is parang cycle na siya. So, kung compute ng AS, then AC, then Z, then AS pod, AC, and then Z. So, bawal ulit-ulit lamang itong uh, cycle hanggang sa matapos nga yung ating um, design. So, ibig sabihin guys, matapos lamang yung ating design kung hindi na magbabago yung value ng A sub S. Okay? So, yun. So, mamaya guys, no? Ituturo ko sa inyo Uh, sa ating mga example problems, ituturo ko sa inyo, mayroong isang shortcut dito na sobrang mabisa mabisa lalo na kapag nag-take ka ng board exam, no? Kasi, uh, it will be a waste of time, guys. Kung paulit-ulit ka, eh, iterative kasi itong process ng design. So, magiging waste of time siya kapag paulit-ulit ka ng ating uh, computation. So, matagal siya. So, meron akong technique dito. So, panoorin nyo, guys, sa last part ng ating video, ay uh, meron akong technique na isi-share sa inyo para hindi na kayo mag-iterative, mag-iteration, para hindi na kayo magpaulit-ulit dito sa cycle na to. So, isang anuan lang siya and mabilis siya kaagad masasolve. Okay? So, that's it, guys. So, yun. So, in the next part ng ating video, guys, ay isasolve natin ito. Okay? This is an SI na problem. Design na T-beam for the floor system shown. So, i-design natin nga yung ating T-beam sa given itong figure na ito. Okay, so that's it guys. See you sa ating next part ng ating video. Ayo!